Well, welcome to Thrive Tribe. And on today's episode, I'm really excited because sharing the table with me, uh, you might notice a faint resemblance, is my uh, third child, my second daughter. And your number one favorite. Uh Depending on the day. Sorry, the rest of you children. Um, Sorry. Some call you my mini me, I consider. (laughs) I I prefer to think of you as my partner in crime. (laughs) But Emma is a professional chef. Um, but she's also a mommy of toddlers and preschoolers, three, yep. three at this point. She she um, actually is the top child right now because she gave me a granddaughter that looks just, just like, like you. Me. Yeah. 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 Sylvia is definitely my mini, mini me. Yeah. She <laughs> makes faces occasionally and I'm like, oh, hello, mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the best thing I've ever done to my son-in-law. He <laughs> has to see his mother-in-law's face every time he holds his baby. But like, she is so sweet. She is so, well... <laughs> naturally, yeah. naturally she's yes. so sweet so the reason that i have emma on the show today is because besides being a chef she also is a, a great model of how we get our kids to try new things to eat and um emma's children now she'll share with you she has food battles just like anybody else but she she has taught them trained them i'm not sure what the word is to try some of the most unusual foods yes. i mean at, at four years old, Oliver, her oldest son, would have set, told you that his favorite food was mussels. Mussels. And yep. he loves um, uh, gnocchi. He loves all these odd kind of things. And so, Em, why don't you share with us, how did you get your children to eat things that most people would say, well, that's an, that's an adult thing. An adult that's taste. an adult food. Yeah. yeah. So a couple of things. First, I don't believe in adult tastes. I think that we teach our children what we want them to be. So I'm purposefully raising adults. Um, So with that, Oliver is high-functioning autistic, and when he first started eating solid foods, had a lot of aversions to textures. And his occupational therapist talked to us about purposefully adding in new textures all the time and not forcing it on him, but allowing him to try them um, to kind of get his palate used to feeling new textures in his mouth because for a while he just wanted mushy. Um, yeah, so like Kraft macaroni and cheese, Velveeta macaroni and cheese, homemade macaroni, macaroni and cheese. cheese. Yeah, yeah <laughs> any type of noodle and cheese. Um, so we started with him and Flynn, who are the two that are eating. Sylvia obviously isn't yet. We would take them to the grocery store with us. And as we went through each department of the grocery store, they get to pick out one item. So when we get to the produce section, I say, go find a new vegetable, a new fruit, something that looks funky and crazy to you, and mommy will cook it at home. And a lot of these things don't actually need to be cooked. They picked dragon fruit and star fruit. They had jicama. They would try different types of lettuce. Um... And I would just cut them up and prepare them at home. And so it's things that typically I wouldn't buy just to have at home. But because that's what they picked out, we made a big deal of it and served it to them. And they got to try it. Now, let me let me throw this in right now. Because I I know that there are moms who are going to go, yeah, I, have, I wouldn't know what to do with a dragon fruit. I wouldn't know what to do with a star fruit. Look, the internet, you can find anything. You can find anything. I made some, I, the, just this weekend, I made mussels molinet, and I had never even had that in a restaurant, but I went on the internet and found out how to do it, so we can learn anything. Yeah, Google anything, and another thing that might come up is I only online grocery shop, and I have my groceries delivered, or I do Walmart pickup. That's fine. While you're doing your online shopping, pull up the produce section and say, all right, kids, what do you want to try this week? We can pick one new item. Oh, it's blackberries. Okay, we're trying blackberries. Oh, you want to try tart cherries? Okay, we'll try tart cherries. Um, So you don't necessarily have to go to the grocery store to do this. Um, But we would do it in each section. So in the cheese section, they got to pick out a new cheese. They've discovered that their favorite is Gouda, so they're (laughs) constantly trying to get Gouda. Um, That's a little inside joke. (laughs) Um, And then... Well, wait. Do they ever pick, like, American cheese in the cellophane? No, they haven't (laughs) yet. They usually try to pick things that have specks in it, and I think they think it's like a candy of sorts. Well, Um, there's an idea, Cheddar M and M, M and M cheddars. Mm. Uh, no, they picked out jalapeno cheddar one week, and I was like, "Okay, it's gonna be spicy," and it didn't go over well. Steve ended up eating that yeah. one. My husband, um, and then 
we walk through the whole grocery store with them so we pass a fish section a couple times they've talked me into buying a whole fish and grilling it um and then they really love mussels they love shrimp they've tried calamari which they didn't love but they tried it and no that's one, what's important no one loves calamari nobody no, actually dad does but oh i wouldn't rubber, no, rubber band I can't man. eat it <laughs> um mm-hmm. oh yeah well let's let's stop for a moment and say that emma has a severe seafood allergy yeah but she has seafood in her home yeah which i think is really really phenomenal because because so often we say oh well you know like your brother nate is allergic to nuts and so it would have been easy to say, well, we're not going to have nuts in the house because Nate might get it. But instead, we just said, we let him know, Nate, there's nuts in this. You don't get to have this. Yep. Right? We, we trained into the allergy. Yeah. So what I've done a lot of research on is um, young children and allergies. And there's studies that show that the earlier you introduce a food to a child, the less likely they are to be allergic to it later on in life. And so I started, we did baby led weaning, which is just offering them the mushy version of whatever you're eating. Um, And I would just give them little pieces of flaked fish, little pieces of cut up shrimp, and they could eat it themselves. And then they're less likely to develop an allergy. Now, it doesn't mean that they won't, but so far they haven't. Well, that's actually why your first food was cheese curls, because it would have been tragical if any of my children were allergic to cheese curls. Yeah, we wouldn't want that. God, I love (laughs) cheese curls. (laughs) That was not fair. You should have brought those up. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so we... I cook anything and everything in the house even if I can't eat it and what I'll just do is if I'm making shrimp for dinner I treat myself to a nice piece of steak or I cook chicken on the grill at the same time Um, my husband loves seafood and so it would be a disservice to him to not cook it right um but then I also encourage them to come into the kitchen with me to cook the item that they've picked so last week it was scallops that Oliver wanted And I had him come into the kitchen and I taught him how you dry them off completely and you don't season them until right before they go in the pan and he got to throw the butter in and help baste them. Um, So things that typically a child wouldn't do on their own, like a kid's not going to come ask to, you know, help out in the kitchen very often, mostly because as a mom it's easier to just not have them in there, get it done, Um, send them outside to be quieter. (laughs) But by encouraging them to be in the kitchen with me, they're invested in the work that's going into dinner. So then I can say to them at the table, you may not be rude and disrespectful of the work that mommy did. You must try a bite. Mm -hmm. And then they know from experience the work that went into dinner instead of it just being an abstract concept that they're trying to guess at. Yeah. Well, And let's, let's say this really clearly. Oliver is how old? Five. Right. So Emma, you're supervising what he's doing, but, but he has kitchen skills that I know some teenagers don't have. His favorite thing to make is mushroom duck cell because he gets to use the food processor. And obviously I'm there with him the whole time, but he cleans the mushrooms and cuts them up and puts them in the processor. And then he gets to lock it safely and, you know, turn it on. Um, So I've let them use equipment that maybe older children haven't experienced yet, but it's because I'm there supervising it and I want them to be comfortable in the kitchen. Okay. So you come to the table. Yep. And, and what if they just say, nah, I'm not going to eat that. So in our house, we don't do big food battles. We've decided that we're never going to pick a battle that we can't win. And food is one thing that you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make a drink. You can set a child at a table, but you cannot make them eat. And so our rule is you have to try a bite. You don't have to eat everything, and you do not have to like it. But you do have to try it. It's new. You don't know that you don't like it. So just try a bite. If they're willing to try a bite, then that's great. Often, <laughs> they have a bite and they love it. Right. Um, we did. I did marinated pork the other week. And they were like, oh, this isn't chicken nuggets. <laughs> and um, I was like, you're going to love it, I promise. And they took a bite. And Oliver pointed his little finger at me. And he said, Mommy, you know what I'm going to say to you? Thank you for the dinner. <laughs> and then he proceeded to eat everything on his plate. Right. He had in his little head that he didn't know if he was going to like it. But he knew the rule was try a bite. Now, if they refuse to eat it, if they try a bite and they don't want to eat anything else, that's fine. 
but you also don't get anything else. Right. I'm not going to make you a sandwich. There's no desserts or treats. You're done. You are offered what you're offered. You can eat a healthy portion of it, or you can eat nothing at all. And those are your choices. And it really teaches gratitude because you're not their slave. Yep. You're not a short order cook. You're not, you know, hey, mom. Yep. Right? You present a nice meal to them. Um, when you guys were growing up, now I, I had a lot of kids, um, so there would be one or two kitchen helpers who knew what we were having for dinner, and sometimes you let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> but generally, if the other children came and said, you know, what's for dinner, what would I say? Something good. Something good. And their dad would say to them, um, to you guys, mommy always makes you something good. Because if we tell children ahead of time what we're going to have, Nine times out of ten, they have an hour and a half to decide they don't like it. Yep. And you, you, the parent, have set up a food battle just because you shared too much information. Yep. And know? I try to explain what's on their plate in terms of what they've already eaten. So if they're having asparagus for the first time, I say it's like a green french fry because that's what it looks yeah. like. It doesn't taste like a french fry, obviously, but it gets it in their head that I've tried something similar before. Yeah. I'm going to like this. Yeah. Now... Uh, this is a personal preference of mine, but I think it teaches into, no, I, I would go beyond saying it's a personal preference. I think it's a character issue with what we do our kids. I didn't hide food in your other mm -hmm. food. Like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna puree all the vegetables and I'm gonna hide it in the meatloaf so that they don't know that they're having it. Cause I, for one, it's deceitful, but, but we want to train them of trust us. This is a trust issue. You can trust mommy that what I give you is good food. Yeah, absolutely. I don't really hide food. Um, I, I just don't put in the effort. It, that's too much effort right. to me. You're going to know that you're eating carrots. Right. And then you're going to know that you like carrots. Yeah. Because if you've just had them pureed and hid it in your meatloaf your whole life, you have no idea that you like carrots. Right, exactly. Um, so it takes, away, it takes away from the children the ability to say, hey, I like, I do this, mm -hmm. I am capable of... Um, so when they become an adult, they think, oh, I'm a picky eater and I don't like a lot of foods. But in reality, you don't know that. And you're not yeah. willing to try them now because you're an established adult. But if as a child you try things and you know what you're trying, you're looking at it and going, I'm capable of trying anything. I am a person who is capable. And that's really important. You know, when you get to be an adult and you go to someone's house and look on the table and you don't recognize what's being served, if you've already trained your mind that I try everything. Yep. You know, you're not going to be that guest that says, uh, do you have like a bowl of cereal? That I have? <laughs> you know, which, which you use the word. That's rude. Yep. That's rude. And we don't want our children to be rude. Scripture says love is not rude. Um, and so you're, you're starting even now teaching that, which I think is important. Now, Steve actually plays an important role in this too, because you did marry someone who maybe in the beginning would have said he was a picky eater. Yep. Um, and uh, what was his favorite food when you got married? <laughs> Hamburger helper. Which is really disappointing to a chef yeah, to have it was a skinny husband <laughs> who likes hamburger helper. But now he eats eats and raves over anything that you make. And so he's really been a good model for the boys. Yep. And we are always very um, open with the boys about, you know, the, f the fact that food is on the table is because of hard work. Right. Mommy and daddy work hard to earn money to put food on this table. And we are going to be grateful for it and eat it. And I always try to give them the moral behind what they're doing. It's not just because we don't want to waste it, although we don't. Right. It's because we're going to be grateful that we even have it. Right. You're teaching stewardship. Yeah. Is what absolutely. you're teaching. Um, now, I'll, I'll be honest. I, you, the idea of having them pick out foods is brilliant. I didn't do that with you guys, <laughs> except on your birthdays, right? Yep. You got to pick your favorite cereal and you got to eat it while everyone else had oatmeal because <laughs> it was cheap and there were a lot of you yep um but i i think what you're doing is brilliant you're doing a great job thank you with those boys and um and i love watching them try new things yeah me too um it's it's different than their cousins the twins who just eat anything because they're always they hungry. just eat yeah they're always <laughs> hungry you know um your your boys maybe wouldn't be as eager to eat but you've really really taught them to do that another thought on the um snacks uh because you had you said they didn't get extra treats or anything like that yeah. what do you do about snacks so we have a snack basket in our pantry and it has all the approved snacks that they can have it has fruit fruit snacks some crackers nothing overly filling um but if they want a snack that's where they go to get it because um, i'm not your slave you can go get it yourself mm. um and then 
there are specific snack times. So I don't allow them to just snack whenever they want. They can get a snack at 10 a.m. and they can get a snack at 4 p.m. And, and you, that, you eat a later dinner. Yeah, we do eat a later dinner. My husband gets home from work pretty late and I try to make sure we have family dinner with him. Um, and so snack time is specific. And it, obviously it's a range depending on the day. It could be 10.30, it could be you know 3.15 yeah. whenever they wake up from naps. Um, but for the most part, middle of the morning and then directly after naps. And then nothing else. You can have some water, but you don't need a snack. You are not right. hungry. You are bored. So yeah, go exactly. clean your when, room. when you guys were little, it was fruit. Yeah, Because you would come to me and say, you know, I'm hungry. And I would say, well, there's apples, there's <laughs> grapes, there's bananas. You'd say, I'm not hungry. Yep. And so, but you came to dinner hungry. Exactly. You came to lunch hungry. And so some of the battles were avoided just because you really were craving food. Where I think if, if we let our kids snack kind of graze all day, they come to dinner, you know, and their tank is down just a little bit. And they look and go, eh, yeah. I could take it or leave it. Exactly. Um and we try to make dinner as pleasant as possible. We want it to be a fun time with daddy. We don't want it to be a frustrating time for everyone. And so by having them be fully hungry um, and trying foods that they've picked, it just invests them in the meal more. Okay, one last question. If a friend came to you with, with toddlers and she's already in the cycle of losing the battles yep, and has a child now who just kicks, screams, just won't do it, how would she start into this? So I would say, Talk to your toddler, they're smart, and change the dynamic. Mommy and daddy work very hard to put this food on your table. And it is rude, so name it, name the sin. It is rude when you refuse to eat. Now, I just want you to try one bite. I want you to see if you like the food that mommy made. If you do, you can have more. If not, that's fine. And then be clear, you're not getting any treats, you're not getting any dessert, and there will be no, nothing else served. This is your dinner. But if you choose not to eat it, that is your choice. And then leave it at that. Uh, nine times out of ten, they take a bite, they like it, they eat the rest of it. Right. Or we, they take a bite, we ignore them, and they keep eating because they're bored. Yeah. And they don't get to get down from the dinner table until everyone's done. Yeah. Um, so. I think it's helpful what you said. You know, again, we don't want to set our kids up for these battles. Right. And when we give them a plate that's just heaping with food, you know, we go, well, I love mashed potatoes. So we give them right. an adult size serving. I think to a child's eyes, it's like when we send them into their playroom that is des destroyed and say, clean your playroom. And they think, I I'm going to be dead before mm -hmm. I'm done yeah, cleaning exactly. this playroom. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But if we say to them, you know, put your dinosaurs away, put your Legos in the Lego box, it's manageable. When yep. we give, for you guys, it was basically two tablespoons per year of age. Okay. So when you were two, you got, you know, four tablespoons yep. of food on your plate, not four of each item, but four tablespoons of food. And you always could have more. Yep. But that's what you started with. And it made it so that you weren't overwhelmed in the beginning exactly and I always try to make sure that there's something on the plate that they, I know that they like Flinny loves carrots so I make carrots a lot because I know he's going to eat them and I know he's going to love them right um, and but you're still introducing but new I'm foods. still introducing yeah, new because I, I want to make sure we're not saying to moms well if your children like lasagna you should serve lasagna five no, times so a week so what I would do is uh, with the scallops I served scallops and corn because I knew that they loved corn and um roasted potatoes and those are there's two items on there that I know for sure that they're going to eat and one item that they get to try but yep. they do have to try it all right that's great well Oliver especially he's he's uh really growing up he's yeah. quite proficient in the kitchen now Emma's husband is a master mechanic and and gra grandpa and I have talked about how can Oliver combine his chefing and his car love and maybe be the wrench chef or something i don't know yeah oliver's but, break um, and bake but yeah. <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> um but yeah you're doing a great job and Thank thanks you. for the model um you're welcome that you're presenting to your kids and my grandchildren and i'll try not to ruin them when i let them come here and have snacks yeah, and so many chocolate, chocolate chip, chip pancakes, pancakes. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well thanks for being with us today uh on this episode of thrive tribe thank you for having me mm -hmm. Thanks for watching that clip on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our weekly content. And now, let's hear from Mr. Pepe Le Pew. I love you. I love you more. I kiss you. I kiss you more.
I couldn't have said it better myself.